Welcome to the third and final review of the original case study that we started way back in the first weeks of the actual course. So remember this is document 3.2 case study student project and again it represents someone who's more junior than you that has some very basic kind of understanding of science and is just trying to go through a project and your goal now is that once they they come to you with their communicated results and they know that it needs some improvement and they're looking for helpful guidance from you someone that's going through this Janet 1103 course and you can go back and read over pause the video now go back and read through the document to get familiar with it again maybe go back and review the previous case studies uh, reviews of this but this one now is going to concentrate mainly on the the stats component and the design of the experiments all the stuff we had leading up to this point in the course and now remember first off if if we were to look at the whole case study they are following somewhat of a deductive reasoning argument and the scientific method in their write-up that they began with their earliest questions their background research their hypothesis their design of their actual experiment their data some kind of actual analysis come to conclusion but there are some big holes within this that need to be improved so we'll now be focusing more on again that like statistical reasoning and the design of the actual experiment and how are they are ending off the project itself so remember that they were looking at stuff that was dealing with okay well we look at their hypothesis and we can quickly kind of find their hypothesis and predictions and we can quickly kind of find the cause and effect that they were looking at and they were looking at if a new fertilizer is added to soil before planting seeds the corn will be sweeter and we know there were some issues before at this they're setting up association um this is still a presumed temporal kind of factor but like Okay, well, we've got that, but again, we're going to have to see how are they measuring, like, sweetness? Uh, like, how is that measurable to become part of that empirical evidence? But whatever. We'll start now with their experiment write-up, and kind of find that quicker, because, well, I can see that there's some stats that are down here below, so their experiment write-up should be coming before I explain how they got to this actual data. And this already does not look long enough to actually like contain a ton of information but let's just go through it slowly okay so for my experiment i set up two fields and monitored them for three months okay so i know this is dealing with plants and this is probably a good indication we can see that there's two fields and they're probably leading towards uh it's properly trying to use that two kind of group study that we know we need to have at least a control group and that we need to have an experimental group where you're actually making changes to the independent variable and gathering data so we can compare the two of these so good so far we know we've got that we have to see more what they say about it but they're leaning towards at least they've got the design of those two experiments um, they gave us your indication that they monitored for three months, so at least we kind of know the time period uh, for how long they're monitoring these, but they didn't really say and give a justification of why three months. Uh, is it just an arbitrary number that they provided? Maybe they should provide references that if they're dealing with, like, uh, corn, well, what can be told within the three month period of corn developing? Is that long enough of a period to tell anything? Or was more needed? Or where did they get this from? They should have had some references or citation of why they actually were making that decision. Okay, let's continue. In one field, I will call this field poopy corn. I planted three cord seeds with the fertilizer applied to the soil. This field is located in the northeastern part of the country. In the other field, I will call this no poopy corn, I planted seven corn plants without using the fertilizer. Well, okay, so if we go into this, we can now know we we're talking about two groups and we were looking for a control group where we're not applying the independent variable, we're keeping everything else the same, and we're looking for another group where we are that we know okay, well poopy corn, that's where the fertilizer is being applied, and that's was the cause, so being our independent variable. And so, okay, well, okay, poopy corn, that is our, like, experimental group or our positive control. So we're getting it here. 
Okay, so we can say, okay, good. At least you have a positive control and you made that one group and you kept it as a field. They have a second field, which is acting as that other group in for those plants in there. That's where they're not applying the fertilizer. So at least they have a control group to go against. So they've got those two things. But now we're going to start looking at the control variables and what they've done. Um, one, they said they started with seeds, whereas the other one, they started with plants. So the field that's already introducing weird bias that you should be starting with the same level of growth if you're starting with a level of plants already or seedlings uh well then both fields should be getting a not one that has just seeds and then already pre-grown seeds uh like no you got to keep that the same so you, you'd have to say well okay that's adding in a spurious reason by one it's adding in bias you need to make sure you keep those con both those conditions the same um, they also talked about here of being, okay, well, three corn seeds and seven corn plants. And this is leading up to when we're talking about the population and sampling methods. And can you pro draw proper inferences based on your data? And well, with plants, like one is okay. Well, you could be slightly off, but if you're controlling the number of plants you've already, you should be able to keep them the same. So bare minimum, there should have been, you know, at least like the same number of plants between both fields to keep that also consistent because especially if we're taking the averages means modes it's going to make variances between the data that like we have to be careful about so okay well you should say that number should be a lot closer to the same and next number should be larger that like with so few data points it's going to skew the data a lot and it's hard to draw the references so their sample size is not even set up properly within here so they really should be going back and deciding upon and justifying why they need the, like the fact that the same number of plants between both and the fact that of how many plants they need and i would say at least try to go for 10 uh like it's a rough estimate at least some numbers are getting a better average but better going 20 to 30 or just checking with what you're trying to get and these variances what you can see between the actual plants um the okay it's going back to other things for controls is that one field no poopy corn this field was located in the northeastern part of the country uh and the other field let's see this was located in the southeastern part of the country and already we have another case where they're not really having the controls because we don't know what country it is we don't know the rain patterns they're not being specific enough where is it getting this they're doing this outdoors so how much sun what time of year all these things we don't know and it'd be hard to really reproduce the results coming from it but at least bare minimum they should have been in the same country if not located near each other so that whatever conditions were affecting one field would hopefully also affect the actual other field as well um and then see here like on the first day of each month i watered each field using the same amount of water per plant well okay so there they're trying to deal with some more controls as well and be control of variables amount of water but again they didn't tell us how much water and like they only did that once a month and is that good enough but at least they're keeping it to a certain level okay. during this time i also record the height of each corn plant and how many fully developed ears of corn i.e the edible yummy part of the plant uh, that i could pick off the plant which i weighed and recorded the values in kilograms well okay thanks but this last part at least is interesting uh, i weighed and recorded the values in kilograms because remembering a lot of stuff that you're doing for measuring is relating to the dependent variable so they're keep like they recorded the height and well is the height related to sweetness and here the kilograms and weight is that related to sweetness like they haven't shown us how that is a measure how is there any references to that how are you measuring sweetness and is weight a determination and if it is where else you gain this from then I can go to validate it like they're not measuring it but they've already even gone past that like they have talking about these two like two groups of one control one experimental um they didn't keep a lot of the controls like we're just adding in so many confounding variables and spurious cases that it starts weakening whatever conclusion they make after this and you'd want to give them that feedback that they need to be more clear about the population that they're looking at um 
uh, uh, why, like how how many actual samples do they need overall in plants and how are they keeping them the same and consistent and then how are they divvying those up into two different groups and at least with plants like it may have random like you randomly pick in between because if there's variation slightly between different seedlings and not again and not making sure it's not all coming from one batch or whatever weirdness could come from there but whatever some kind of randomized two groups to get this within here being the same the same location they need to be way more clear about their control variables giving exact values they need to be way clearer about their actual experimental procedure giving more in-depth detail about how they're collecting the data because if they're more junior here we want to validate what they're actually getting from there and so this needs to be developed a lot more and extend this association with weight and kilograms of measuring how does that associate to sweetness at all what does that tell us so if we go back they start showing some of their data and okay we have to read it quickly with symbols well we know okay median they're giving us these values everything's in kilograms but we've got these combination here and remember that the symbol in between of the plus minus is sometimes used to indicate when you're talking about the mean and the standard deviation so with these groups saying well okay that'd be the mean so that is our measure of centrality so what's most commonly seen and then we have to look over here well the standard deviation um this is uh, again that measure of spread and that median is that kind of point is like well half of the plants would have produced less than or equal to like 15 kilograms and then so forth and how the other half would be more than 15 kilograms and so overall with this okay well they're using the mean i got the same thing kind of down here and so they must be assuming that they have a normal distribution and it's not skewed anywhere um because that's the one way it works with the mean uh they don't have any charts to kind of help compare these these visually show off what's happening uh they don't give us all the other data what's the min and max to be able to compare it'd be nice if we had the interquartile range also to compare if we're going with how we've been covering stuff in this course uh so like there's some issues here there's not other extra statistics there's have some basic data and trying to make an argument across from this and going with kilograms and like we could start doing our own analysis and see how they back it up but let's see what they have to say um okay so in their analysis that you follow after is they looked at the mean of both fields first okay so the measure of centrality was most common okay let me find uh the mean of the pile of corn was lower than the no poopy corn well let's look at that so remember this first one is our experimental group we expect to see some kind of change and if it's sweeter something's increasing and if they're trying to tie it to kilograms which doesn't work but we'll just keep going with the reasoning here okay well then the number should be increasing it's sweeter should be more weight should be higher numbers i don't know i uh so like the, this lower than no poopy corn okay well it's lower they're quantifying stuff but they're very weakly quantifying that they're not being very specific by how much like 0 0.001 kilograms less could be considered lower what do they mean by that they should actually be getting a little bit more specific and if we look okay it's roughly two kilograms lower okay fine um, but is kilograms when it's pounds is it really that far off to draw stuff okay, whatever uh, this tells me that more than half of the values from poopy corn were lower than the values from no poopy corn and you're like uh no that doesn't at all like the only value tells you when something's larger or smaller from there being half is the median and that median you can't compare between the actual two groups you talk about one you talked about the mean and because the mean lower then that's half that means nothing like the median here is talking about the distribution of data with one set and this median is here you need to compare the number separately and here just saying lower and it doesn't say half so it seems to me like they're mixing up mean and median as a definition and kind of fudging the results they're getting here and this this is not a conclusion you can draw from and you'd want to give them that feedback that okay you look at them here like one being lower you need to specify exactly how much and is that big enough to be statistically significant in relation to this course to say that that's a big enough change um the fact that half the values like you have to explain them like well no this is a measure of centrality uh, and this sounds like you're talking about the median, but you mentioned mean, which is an average, which never says that anything about the distribution of how much data is on each side, that you need to then combine that with the standard deviation instead to say, well, 
this is your median how much does it spread out from there to tell more data so but this way here just because one's smaller or lower does not tell you this it's if here if i told you that the median of the booby gorn is 15 kilograms then you could say half the data points are below and half the data points are above uh, when it comes to there but you can't make that claim here uh, next they go on to this naturally shows uh that uh, yeah that the corn from no poopy corn field must have been producing sweeter corn on a larger scale and bah, 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 i'm gonna go with bs meter there that that's a flying leap that connects to nothing that they've done before and if the previous premises is, is like well if we even we're trying to try to do somewhat to duck to reasonable together is first premise being that the field one field had lower value than the mean uh, the next premise this tells us less than half and then the third premise this naturally shows us that it produced sweeter corn there's nothing that's tying these in between there's nothing from that mean to connect its half like that doesn't work you talk about a measure of centrality and what it is and if this is the proper definition or going to what that is then well then i could tie these two together but this jump to saying that's more sweeter is there's no previous premise between us that's saying anything about lower means or anything else that indicates anything of sweetness they haven't made that an argument anywhere before as a premise to build upon and backed it up where they're getting that evidence from so you're like no this that's just bs at this time um, okay, let, let's just continue on with this. Let's say the median values of corn are higher than new poopy corn. Okay, we've got the mediums. Okay, well, yeah, that is from what they're showing here from the data. But again, it's only two kilograms. Is it really that much? Um, and they're not stating more of really what that says. Um, this tells me that the central tendency of the field was higher, but not by much. So the sweetness cord must also be higher. And you're like, well, no, okay, at least... They're saying central tendency and measure central tendency and they're talking about median so that is one of them but that doesn't go more specific because central tendency is also like which one is it mode is it median is it mean where are we going from there what what does that tell us so you'd have to give them feedback that they need to be more specific about that and also like the there's again no previous premise saying that evidence has shown that the, when there's more weight there's a higher sweetness like no like there, we don't have anything before to back up as a premise so that is just kind of made up randomly here um the standard deviation of the poopy corn field is also smaller and closer to zero um like okay but not really it is also smaller uh, it's four or six but remember the standard deviation is plus or minus within that range it doesn't matter if it's going towards zero like it'll mean uh, sure concentrated around the mean but this means well you add four the 25 and you minus four and you get the range of how much it's spreading out so this means based on central tendency and you're getting then plants that are let's see roughly um r roughly 21.45 kilograms up to 20 uh 9.45 kilograms so there's about a 10 kilogram span that's 68 percent of the plants that were coming out of this that um uh, had that rate but if we go back up and check the stats again there's only seven plants so 68 percent of the seven plants and even you can see these data like this is what screws up the rest of the measurements you're getting down here so you're like well no that says nothing uh from there so this tells me that the values do not spread out as far as the no poop corn fields well okay fine they're at least saying here okay you're using standard deviation as a measure of spread okay good from right here but you don't specify why it's too too narrow um and you're like okay well this is in relation to here so they never talked about the actual ranges that you would get from like in the first step of the standard deviation uh because this minus plus or minus six from this 27 you're getting well 21.34 whereas here you got 21.45 well no they're overlapping still a lot there and but then if we add here the uppercase then you're getting 33 and then like compared to the 29 and so there's a slight shift between the actual two that there's a little bit more actual higher end weight so we can tell from here we don't have the min or max to know a further actual range values at all to work with and so this overlap is not much from there so like they can't really 
keep making these claims and like this shows us that the sweetness factor is also more concentrated like there's nothing that says standard deviation and the fact that it's closer to mean says it's also concentrated like more points are concentrated around the mean but that doesn't mean it's like the sweetness is actually concentrated they're again doing a flying leap and they've known no connection of how more points around this show that is more sweet there's nothing from here so a lot of this is their attempt to do it but they need to go back and start their stats more and know the measures of centrality they need to know spread better they needed to include in their experiment procedure to collect more data and provide better stats to show a range and some charts to back up their argument and like they're not really ever coming to that case of building up a logical argument of all the premises that connect together and pulling the data from all the previous steps to get where they're sitting now it just doesn't work and like they go on is that based upon these results, they have concluded that they have verified that the new fertilizer will always produce more sweetness. And now, so they're not even going back to accept or reject their original predictions and showing that actual data that like, you can finally, by the last premise of their overall argument, combine the stats, come to that conclusion. They showed nothing. And they're not following with even the heart of science. They're saying that accept or reject the hypothesis and the fact that you're, you're doing that final kind of inference that you're like, well, it's not always verified. It's in your experiment that you did that this worked. You're claiming, but there's nothing really strongly backing this up that you should really should, based upon our evidence and our argument showing that we accept and the difference is like, like they need to go back to a better way of stating this. Um, they also need to go back in here and state of anything about statistical significance is that difference is that big. And I personally would say that two kilograms, cause it's not that much in weight is a couple pounds is not going to make that much difference. If at all, we even had some association between weight and sweetness, which we don't. So like the differences even here aren't even big enough to be statistically significant in my opinion and they haven't even argued talking more specifically about the differences between these and these ranges and trying to demonstrate that overall there's a big enough change with everything in a lower lump of a data versus one side versus the other and what indicates being better or bad like they need to expand upon this a lot so I will stop there, and I think uh, hopefully this helps if you go back between all three case studies and seeing, okay, well, this one, how could you give them feedback and dig deeper to understand all these aspects? And I still challenge you to go back now that we're nearing the end of the course and go back through this case study and individually give feedback on each step of saying how they could do stuff better. How can you give them constructive feedback on what else they could actually do? And take care of yourself and... Keep plugging through the materials as we get closer to the end.